Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be unboxing this mystery package from Manhattan Coffee Roasters. Now let me give you the backstory behind this package, as I've been in discussions with co-founder and roaster Ben Morrow about Manhattan's transition from the ProBath to the Typhoon as their primary roasting machine. And a lot of people know that I'm a big fan of Manhattan's ProBat, as I feel it gives their coffee a brown candy quality that is unique to them and their roaster. So me and Ben both came up with the same idea, and that was blind taste testing coffees roasted on the ProBat and the Typhoon side by side to see if I could tell the difference or if I had a preference between the two coffee roasters. So I imagine that this box is filled with unlabeled samples, so we are going to find out together right now as I'm going to open this package for the very first time. So bear with me as uh, oftentimes it can take a little bit to open Manhattan's packages. It's actually quite heavy, so I imagine there are probably going to be a lot of samples in here if there are samples. So I also imagine that this might end up being a very long series if that is the case. And as mentioned, there's a lot of tape. For anybody that's ever ordered from Manhattan, this is pretty standard. It takes a fair bit to get to their coffee. I could have opened it ahead of time, but uh, what's the fun in that? We can all find out together what is inside of this package. Okay, there we go. And yes, we have a lot of samples and I have no idea what any of these samples mean. So here we have 13A, we have 13B. We have 14A, we have 14B. We have an abundance of just samples, unlabeled samples. So I imagine given that there's not a note anywhere in here that it's going to be on the back of what each of these samples are. So in order to keep everything fair, I'm not going to look at the back of any of those to figure out which coffee is which, but yeah, it looks like we have at least 14 different samples of coffees. I don't even know which coffee might be which, so that's going to make things really interesting. I imagine I'm going to try probably 4A and 4B side by side with each other and so on and so forth. But yeah, this is uh, quite a bit of coffee and it's going to lead to a pretty long series. So this right here is just the first part of this series and I'm looking forward to seeing if I do have a preference or seeing if I'm able to tell the difference. So I'm going to end this first part right here and we will be right back with whatever we proceed to do with this series. And we're back, so let me go ahead and update you guys on this package. And the first thing I wanted to say is none of these coffees are labeled anywhere with the exception of the 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, so on and so forth label that all of them have been assigned. So it's actually impossible for me to know which coffee is roasted by which roasting machine. And then the second thing I wanted to say is we're actually going to break up this video into multiple days. So I'm going to be recording it on different days, but I'm going to clip them all together into one long video. And I assume at the end, Ben's gonna let us know which coffees were roasted by which machine, but I'm not entirely sure. We will get to that when we get there. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and start with these coffees. So these are all labeled 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and 3A and 3B. And I've also taken some very minor notes to kind of differentiate what I noticed when brewing these coffees. These are all brewed the exact same way, so our standard recipe, and I actually have enough. I have uh, two kettles, I have two scales, I have two V60s, so they are all done the exact same. So this will be very interesting. Let's go ahead and start with the one coffees, and the things I noticed about coffee 1A is that it was a little bit more fine on the grind. There was a quicker drawdown and it was visually lighter. And then the other thing is that 1B had a couple more boulders, it choked up a little bit more and it was slightly darker visually speaking. So let's go ahead and try 1A and we will see which of these coffees I like more. I imagine that these two coffees are actually going to be wash processed coffees, but I don't even know what these coffees are in general. So that one right there, a very clean coffee, pretty even, nothing too differentiating or standing out with that one, but let's see how it compares to 1B, which is what we're here for. Okay, I, there is actually quite a noticeable difference between these two coffees. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to be very decisive and come up with a pick as to which one I like a little bit more. So that one right there is a little bit more clean, a little bit more even. This one right here has a kind of interesting herbal aspect to it. A little bit more of a citric component to it as well. 
This one has more vibrancy in general. This one right here came out very, very clean, very, very even. <laughs> yeah, there's, they're very different in that sense. So I'm trying to differentiate which one I liked a little bit more. I think that that one maybe is a little bit more clean than I would like. This one right here just has a little bit more to it in general. <laughs> I'm gonna pick 1B. So 1B is my pick for the first coffee that we're going through. Let's go ahead and move on to number two. And what I noticed the differences between the second coffee is that number two had a more even grind. The bend finished a little bit more even as well. It was a slightly uh, lower drawdown and there was more shaft. I think that this one's actually a Panamanian Gesha before even trying it. I think it's one of the Janssen coffees based off the aroma I was getting from brewing the coffee. And then 2B had less shaft, it was less even, and it had a quicker drawdown. So let's go ahead and see which one of these I liked more, starting with 2A. Okay, this one right here, once again, it's a little bit more clean, it's a little bit more even. There isn't too much in terms of vibrancy to kind of differentiate, at least from this first impression, but let's go ahead and see how it compares to coffee 2B. Okay, these ones are a little bit more similar. I would say that there was a noticeable difference between the first coffee, but these two right here have a lot of similarities to them. If I did have to say which one was maybe a little bit more vibrant, just with recent trying of this one, I would say that it's probably this one, but let's try 2A one more time. Yeah, once again, I think that the second coffee, the B coffee, had just a slight bit more vibrancy to it. This one right here is coming out a slight bit more clean and even yet again. So I'm going to say, for the same reason, I'm going to pick 2B. So we have 1B and we have 2B as of this first impression. Now we'll move on to coffee number three, starting with coffee 3A. And let me consult my notes one more time. And what I noticed about 3A was that it was a more even grind. Uh, it was visually lighter and it took more time to grind. And then 3B was uh, less even of a grind. It was slightly visually darker and it had a more even bed in the finish. So let's start with 3A. Hmm. I actually think I know what this coffee is, but I'm gonna kind of keep that to myself. This has some really nice vibrancy to it. It's a very sweet cup of coffee. I really like the definition that's present in that one as well. This is a very, very nice cup of coffee. Actually, so far to this point, this has been my favorite on this table, 3A. All right, 3B. Okay. Once again, these two coffees are a little bit more on the similar side of things, mostly because they both had some great sweetness and great vibrancy to them. So I'm going to run through them one more time and see if I can differentiate which one I liked a little bit more. I feel like this one came out slightly more clean and this one, once again, a little bit more vibrant. I'm hoping that the way that this was set up wasn't that all the A coffees are one roaster and all the other coffees, the B coffees are the other roaster. I don't imagine that's what Ben would do, but you never know. It could entirely be reverse psychology on this. Yeah, I think that this one's just coming out slightly more tame based off of that second run through. So let me try this one one more time. Yeah, this one's a little bit more vibrant. And I think once again, for that reason, I'm going to pick 3B as my favorite coffee. I'm going to run through these just one more time to see if I agree with my second assessment, but I think my favorite coffee on this table might be 3B. I'll try 1A one more time. Yeah. These were probably the two that had the most differences between them when just comparing them alongside each other. <laughs> Definitely. I don't know, there's a case to me be made for 1A, but I'm trying to be very decisive and pick one uh, pretty firmly, and I'm gonna go with 1B, even though maybe I do like the kind of evenness of 1A a little bit more. I think just having a little bit more to the coffee in general with 1B made that one a little bit more enjoyable. We'll run through two one more time. And once again, just a little bit more clean and even. And on a second run through, once again, these, these are the most similar. So one was definitely different, two was definitely a lot of similarities. I think there's just a little bit more brightness at the end on the bee coffee. Yeah, I could see that. And once again, I'm gonna stick with B. So one B, 2B, and then I'm pretty sure 3B is gonna still hold that spot. 
I do really like the three coffee though. <sighs> yes, I'm gonna go with three B. That's kind of shocking. Uh, the B coffee won all the first three coffees that we tried. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this part at that. And I'm going to be returning here shortly for coffees four through six. And we're back with coffees four through six. And one note I wanted to correct from the previous group of coffees is that I'm not entirely sure the first coffee was just a standard washed coffee. As after recording that video, I went back and tried all of those coffees one more time. And I came to the same conclusion that all of the B coffees were my favorite. But when going back to coffee number one, I felt a slight fermentiness to it, which didn't indicate that it might not have been just a standard wash processed coffee. But once again, we have coffees 4A, 4B, 5A, 5B, and 6A, 6B. And let me go ahead and take you through the notes for what I found for the four coffees. And what I noticed from 4A was that it had a more even bed after brewing and a little bit more even of a grind. Whereas 4B had a slightly longer drawdown and it didn't crater as much. So let's go ahead and give 4A a shot. And I know that this is probably going to be my least favorite coffee up to this point, as you definitely tell that these are slightly heavier processed coffees. Okay, that's actually not bad given that I know what this coffee is. It's a little bit more clean than I might have expected. This is definitely a little bit more of a heavy processed coffee, but the first impression is yielding some slightly positive results, so there is that ever so slight grainy quality at the end. All right, 4B. This one has a little bit more to it, but that's not necessarily a good thing when it comes to heavier processed coffees. It's coming through a lot more in the finish too, not quite as much clarity. So I feel like this one's pretty straightforward. I like 4A a little bit more because it offered more clarity and it didn't have that sort of fermenty aspect in the finish itself, but we'll come back to that one. Next up we have 5A and let me take you through the notes for the five coffees. And interestingly enough, up to this point, these are the two coffees that were extremely similar in so many aspects. The only noticeable difference was that there was a very slightly darker quality to 5B as opposed to 5A. So let's give 5A a shot. When brewing this coffee, I could not tell what this was. I don't think I've had this coffee from them before, but I've had coffees that are similar to this one. That's interesting. It's got a very interesting sort of fruit component to it. All right, and here we are 5B. Okay, I think I definitely like 5B better. 5B, a little bit more clean, a little bit more even, definitely more even on the fruit components for this one. So this one right here, it was a little bit kind of varied. I would say that the acidity wasn't necessarily as defined as it was in this one. So 5B, the clear winner for me on the five coffees. And then coffees six, and what I noticed from the six coffees was that 6A was a little less even on the grind. It cratered more and it was noticeably lighter and had a much more flat bed after it had been brewed. And then 6B had a much more even grind. It uh, took a little longer to grind the coffee as well. And it was definitely visually darker. And when it comes to all of the coffees we've tried up to this point, 6A and 6B had the most distinguishable difference between the actual color of the grounds and the coffee themselves. So 6A, let's give this one a shot. I like this one actually. I like this one a fair bit. This one could possibly actually be one of the washed coffees, but this first impression on the 6A coffee, it's actually very, very nice. I like the evenness that's coming from this coffee. 6B. Six B is good too. I think it's just a little less even. If anything, the brightness is showing a little bit more in this one. It's good too though. I like the six coffees. Whatever the six coffee is, I like, which is funny because I really liked the three coffees. Maybe it could be because I know I'm not the biggest fan of whatever these coffees are, but let's take one more run through. I think six A is actually going to be my favorite among the six coffees. So let's try the four coffees just one more time. They're not cooling down exceptionally well when it comes to these four coffees, but once again, this is not necessarily my type of coffee. It's definitely 4A. 4A is my winner of the four coffees. This one is definitely a fair bit more fermenty for me. All right, five coffees. 5A just has kind of a weird fruit quality to it. It has the same fruit component, but it's a little bit more clean and even and defined in this 5B. Definitely. 
I'm going with 5B on this one. And then last we have the six coffees and let's give them a shot. A little more tricky to tell having just finished the five coffees, but really like 5A. 5B is not without its charm. I do like the brightness that's coming from the end of this one, but I still think that maybe I'm gonna go with the 6A. So we have 4A, 5B, and 6A. So we'll be back once again with the next set of coffees here shortly. And we're back with coffees seven through nine. No additional notes from the previous set of coffees as I went back and agreed with all the picks we had made. So once again, we have coffees 7A, 7B, 8A, 8B, 9A, and 9B. So let's go and get started with our notes for coffee 7A. And what I noticed was a less even bed and a quicker drawdown, while 7B had a more even bed and a slightly more fine grind. And I actually think I know what all three of these coffees are, so let's go ahead and get started with coffee 7A. And when I say I believe I know what these coffees are, it's basically just from grinding them. The aroma and the brew itself, I feel like yielded some results that were familiar with coffees I'd had in the past. This one comes out a little bit more harsh at the forefront, though it does have a slight bit more clarity on the back end. So it's interesting in that sense. Let's go ahead and see how it compares to coffee 7B. And this one right here, has a slight bit more clarity on the forefront, though it has a bit more of a harsh finish to it. I think, interestingly, for that reason, I'm going to prefer coffee 7A because the finish does matter a lot with this coffee. So 7A, my pick so far. We'll run back through that one one more time and see how I feel. But let's move on to coffee 8A. And what I noticed from this one was that it ground quicker and had a more even bed in the finish. And then coffee 8B ground slower had a less even bed, was visually darker, and had a lot of Quakers, actually, interestingly. So I'm gonna show you the bag right here. You might be able to see it, it's right there at the front. But this is the only coffee so far we've had that have had any Quakers to them, so let's go ahead and try coffee 8A. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've had this coffee before. Very clean, a slight bit of a grainy quality to it. Let's go ahead and see how it compares to coffee 8B. And I think 8B is going to be the clear winner on this one. There's much more vibrancy to this coffee. A distinct and noticeable amount of vibrancy on 8B, at least compared to 8A. 8B is my pick for this one. Once again, we'll run through that one one more time, but let's move on to the nine coffees. And the notes I have for coffee 9A was that it was visually lighter, a more even ground, and a quicker drawdown, while 8B was visually darker, choked up a bit, and had a more even bed in the finish. So it's going to start with coffee 9A. I actually really like this coffee. I really adore the sweetness that comes from this coffee. This is a very nice first impression. One of my favorite coffees I've had in this entire set so far. All right, coffee 9B, let's see how it compares. This isn't the same. This is probably the most drastic difference I've noticed between two coffees up to this point. This one right here has a much more distinct brightness to it. It's lacking the same sort of sweetness that I experienced from coffee 9A. 9A is definitely my pick with this one, and I think it's by far the most drastic difference in preference I've had to any coffee as of this moment. I'm very curious to find out which one of these is roasted with a probat and which one is roasted with a typhoon. All right, let's run through these one more time with coffee 7A. And once again, slightly harsh on the forefront, but it does seem to settle off pretty well after that. So I think that's what's going to set these two apart. Bad set. All right. Yeah, still agree with that assessment. 7A is definitely my pick among those two. All right, let's move on to the eight coffees and 8A. Yeah, it's just very, very clean. And I feel like with this coffee, you need a little bit more vibrancy as opposed to the clarity because it already offers enough clarity to begin with. And coffee 8B. Definitely coffee 8B. And it's not even necessarily sacrificing too much clarity. They're both pretty clean cup of coffees anyway. So let's move on to the nine coffees and 9A, which were th I think was my favorite on this table, actually. I really like 9A. 9 is great. All right, let's see once again how it compares to 9B. Definitely. 
A 9 is my pick, so I'm actually quite happy with my picks. And once again, we will be right back with our next set of coffees. And we're back with coffees 10 through 12. No additional notes from the previous group of coffees, as I agree with the picks I had made on those. So once again, we have coffees 10A, 10B, 11A, 11B, 12A, and 12B. Let's go ahead and get started with the notes we have for coffee 10A. And what I noticed was that there was a slightly less even grind, and it was visibly lighter, while 10B had a more even grind and was visibly darker. Let's go ahead and get started with coffee 10A. Okay. I mean, not too much to say on it. It's actually a quite nice coffee, but of course we have to see how it compares to coffee 10B. It is really interesting how much of a noticeable difference there is between all of the samples I've had so far up to this point. Once again, I can notice a fair bit of difference between these two coffees. The first coffee comes out a little bit uh, better in the finish. There's a little bit more fruit forward of a finish, while the second one has a little less definition in the finish itself. I have a very strong preference for coffee 10A, so that's my pick. Let's move on to the 11 coffees. And what I noticed for 11A was that there was more noticeable chaff. And it was a more even bed, while 11B had a less even bed and it was a less even grind. So, coffee 11A. I'm not the biggest fan of this coffee. This one isn't necessarily my preference. Um, well, we'll see how it compares to 11B. 11B, I think I like a little more. There's a very strong herbal aspect to this first one, and I feel like it's less prominent in the second coffee, and that's probably going to be the defining factor for me. I'm going to pick 11B for right now, but as always, we're going to run through them one more time. So let's run through the 12 coffees real quick, and what I noticed for 12A was a slightly more even grind and a more even bed, while 12B was visually darker. Let's go ahead and start with coffee at 12A. Um, this one's very interesting, actually. I was not expecting that with this coffee. Okay, there's a lot of brightness to it in general. Um, we'll see how it compares to coffee at 12B. They're both this way. These coffees are very close in the way that they taste. I think I have a very slight preference for 12B, but these are very close, the closest out of any of these coffees on this table. So let's try them one more time. We'll see if I agree with the picks. I said 10A for this one. Let's try them one more time. Okay. I think that's not bad. I like the evenness that's present within that one. 10B. Yes, 10A is my clear winner. I'm picking 10A for this coffee. Next up, we have the 11 coffees, and I believe I picked 11B on this one. Yeah, this 11A has such a harshness to it. I don't think it was quite as present in 11B. It's a little more present now, but it could just be the lingering effects. These are maybe a little closer. I'm gonna stick with 11B on this one, and of course, if I have any adjustments, I'll let you know in the next part of this video, but Let's try the 12 coffees. These ones were really close. It's a very interesting coffee. I'm very curious to find out what this 12 coffee is. Yeah, I think it's 12B. 12B is just a little bit more even. They're both pretty bright. I'm kind of surprised by the brightness in both of them, but I think 12B just kind of settles a little better. So uh, those are my picks. We will be back here shortly with the final part. And we're back with coffees 13 and 14. Only additional note from the previous group of coffees is that 12B did seem to cool down in a very similar manner to 12A, and that resulted in those coffees being extremely close. However, I do think I still had a very slight preference for coffee 12B. Once again, we have coffees 13A, 13B, 14A, and 14B, and we're actually going to change things up and start with the 14 coffees, as I do think that the 13 coffees are some very heavily processed coffees, and I do want to be able to taste the 14 coffees. So for 14A, what I noticed was a much quicker drawdown, and with 14B, there was slightly more chaff. Other than that, there weren't too many differences between the two coffees. So let's go ahead and start with coffee 14A. Okay. Very nice coffee, my type of coffee. Not too much to say on that, just pretty clean in general. So we will see how it compares to coffee 14B.
Every time I've run this, I've just noticed that every time you compare them side by side, you can tell differences. <laughs> I do have a pretty strong preference for 14A. 14A just seemed to be a little bit more well-defined. It had a little bit more sweetness to it. 14B, while it was a little brighter and maybe a little cleaner, it didn't necessarily have the same sort of vibrancy I was looking for. There was just a slight bit more unique of a brightness to the cup. 14A, my clear winner on that one. Of course, we'll go back to it. But let's see how 13A and 13B compare. And what I noticed for coffee 13A was that there was a slightly more fine grind and an even bed in the finish, while 13B had a quicker drawdown. Start with coffee 13A. Yes, that's a very heavily processed coffee. There's a lot of fermentiness in this one. Not necessarily my favorite, everything I was kind of concerned about, but it's good that I started with these coffees. Let's see how it compares to coffee 13B. I'm hoping that this one will be a fair bit cleaner. And it is a little cleaner. Based off the results we've had, I'm just kind of waiting to see if maybe it comes through a little bit more in the finish. It was cleaner on the forefront. Feels a little bit cleaner on the back end. That will make it a very easy winner. I'm going to pick 13B easily on this one. Um, let's try the coffees one more time. I was pretty set on 14A for this one. I do like 14A. All right. And we'll see how it compares to 14B. 14A is definitely my pick. And I'm 100% confident in those as well. So 13B was my pick. And that's actually how I'm going to end this. And I know that's a little anticlimactic, but given that I don't know any of the results right now, there's only so much I can say to kind of finalize this, but I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to do a follow-up video to discuss the results, or I'm going to discuss it in our monthly recap. And I'm going to be in conversation with Ben to see whether he's going to post the results himself or if I'm going to post the results. So there might be a little bit of back and forth on that. But I'm definitely going to be responding to all of the comments once we do find out all of the details about these coffees. But this has been such a fun little experiment. I've been very curious to see how these coffee roasters would compare. And if you guys did enjoy this content, I would really appreciate a like. As you can tell, it took multiple days and a lot of hours to make this content. So I'm really hoping that this will be useful for not just me, Manhattan, but everybody that watched this video as well. So if you guys did enjoy that content, then give this video a like. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But this right here has essentially been a uh, blind taste test of 28 different samples from Manhattan Coffee Roasters. Thanks to Ben and everybody at Manhattan for giving me the, this opportunity to record this video. And thank you everybody for watching.